Okay, here comes the fun part of the derivatives, and that deals with trigonometric functions, particularly sine and cosine. This is also going to require us to remember what sine and cosine means in terms of right triangles. Now remember that this all involves legs of, um, of an angle of a right triangle, but not the right angle itself. And the one that's touching the angle is considered the adjacent leg, the one opposite the angle is the opposite leg, and the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. And what we're going to use here is something called the squeeze theorem. And the squeeze theorem you know, basically shows us um, how we can uh, determine a value in the middle of two substances that gets closer and closer in limit to either side of a particular uh, value that we have in question. We can find the limit from both directions and the limit for the two on either side are the same and that is the limit of that one right smack in the middle of it. Alright, so what we're doing here is we're going to take a look at an angle going from the x-axis up to uh, a part of the curve that we have right here. The arc is what we're looking at there. But we're looking at three triangles. One in which the triangle is outside. The one in which the triangle is not a straight line right here. We're looking at what we call a sector. And the third one is when we have the uh, triangle on the inside. And what we're going to look at is the limit as we get closer and closer to this curve here from the inside and closer and closer as we move towards from the outside. And we hope to get as close as we can to this triangle right here. So we have to look at uh, how we can determine the um, area of a triangle for each one. Well, the area of a triangle is one half base times height, or one half height times base, depending upon which direction you're looking at this right here. Now, this triangle right here blown up over here. We know that this is what we call a unit circle. A unit circle meaning we have a value of one here, the radius is one, and then everything is relative to that, okay? So if it was 6, everything would be 6 times bigger, it was 0.5 be half bigger, so, or 50% smaller. In this triangle right here, we know that this side is 1, we're trying to figure out what that is right there. For this angle, this is our theta right here. Okay, now, this is the adjacent leg to that, and this is the opposite leg to that, and the trigonometric function in Sokotoa tells us that we can find the tangent of theta based upon that. So, um, the tangent of theta here is going to be opposite x over um, adjacent 1. And that gives us a value of x. So that means then that the length of this side of the triangle then is the tangent of x. Or in this case, I should put tangent of theta, since x was the numerical value for that, since so the tangent of theta. So when we find the area of this triangle right here, it's going to be equal to um, base 1 times height tangent theta, which is tangent theta, and half of that, so that's going to be all over 2. So that's the outside triangle in relation to the curve there. The inside one right here, the exact uh, area of, rec of the uh, sector there, is the radius times the uh, angle that we have here divided by 2. That's the definition of the area of the sector. And then the inside triangle is the one here, and the area for this is equal to and this is identified, this right here is, this point right here is cosine theta sine theta. So, um, this gives us the, uh, oh, there it is. Since this height right here is the sine of theta, then that means that this is going to be 
1 times the sine of theta, which is sine of theta, over 2. So those are the three values of the triangles here. Tan of theta over 2, r times theta over 2, and sine theta over 2. Well, what is r here? Well, the r here is 1. So this is just going to be plain um, theta over 2. So that tells us then, we know by looking at this triangle here, that this is bigger, it's outside, so it's bigger. This is going to be smaller than that, and this is going to be even smaller than that. So we have the hierarchy, so we have tangent of theta over 2 is greater than or equal to um, that didn't work, having issues with my board now, is equal to delta uh, theta over 2. Which is greater than or equal to sine of theta over 2. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to multiply everything, this whole relationship here, by 2 over sine theta. That's just to make one of the values equal to 1, our value of r. Now, we have to remember that tangent of theta is the same thing as sine theta over cosine theta. So I'm going to replace this with sine theta over cosine theta. So when we, mul we multiply this by this term right here, the sines cancel out and the twos cancel out. So we are left with 1 over cosine theta. And that's greater than or equal to, the twos cancel out here, and we get theta over sine theta. And then this is going to be greater than or equal to, and this will be equal to 1. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try and get rid of these values in the denominator. So we're going to take this whole thing and take the reciprocal of it. But when you take the reciprocal of each one, that's going to change these signs around. Because if this is 5, and this is 3, and this is 1, and you flip around that, it becomes 1 fifth, 1 third, and 1, the order changes. So this is going to change all these symbols over to less than or equal to. This is going to become inverse of this is cosine theta. Inverse of this is sine theta over theta. And the inverse of this is just plain 1. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. So, the squeeze theorem, which is in your book, but is, is pretty much what I described there, says that these are all approaching the same thing. Since they were practically running the smaller and smaller and smaller the distances between them, so we have virtually, you know, no daylight in the uh, the uh, distance between the arc and the line. Uh, we are going to get a value of one. So this is a a um, trigonometric function for sine theta that says that the limit as x approaches zero or delta x approaches zero, I should say, of the sine of x over x, or if I want to use thetas, I can do that, but the book uses x's, is equal to 1. And that's going to be uh, important when you start doing with, uh, with the derivatives of trigonometric functions like sine. Now, cosine, when we do that one, um, it turns out that if we uh, if we were to uh, find the limit as uh, delta x approaches zero of one minus cosine x over x, we want to find this value right here. We can go through a series of uh, values at which we can we can calculate that. Um, 
Actually, that's not delta x, that's just plain x. So is the other one in front, so uh, I'll, in fact, I'll just fix that right now. This is just plain x, x approaches zero. All right, so anyway, getting back to this. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take 1 minus cosine x over x, and I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of 1 minus cosine x, which is 1 plus cosine x. And that's going to give us 1 plus cosine x here over x, and this is going to equal 1 minus cosine squared x over x squared. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator on the same thing, so it'll be 1 plus cosine x. So x times 1 plus cosine x. So what we do with that then is I recognize that this is actually part of one of the trig uh, functions that you, some of you will probably remember, which states that sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So if we remove this cosine squared x by subtracting, this becomes equal to sine squared. Sine squared x over x times 1 plus cosine x. Well, right now, this just looks like a, an ugly, ugly mess. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, separate the sine squared and make it sine times sine. Let's take sine x times sine x over um, x times 1 plus cosine x. And I'm going to make this a product of two different fractions. So this would be sine x over x times sine x over 1 plus cosine x. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to recognize that we just did an identity involving this. And we said that sine x over uh, x is equal to 1. If we replace 0, since the limit is 0, so we replace both of these with 0, the sine of 0 is 0, and 1 plus cosine 1 is 2, but 0 over 2 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, so that means then that um, the limit of 1 minus cosine x over x is equal to 0, and that's our second trigonometric um, derivative function.